From producer William Fox of Fox Film Corporation comes Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. This won several Academy Awards at the first ever Academy Awards for Best Picture and Best Female Lead. The characters are never given actual names. They're simply the man, the wife, etc. Because this song, according to the title cards, is from everywhere and nowhere. Here we see miniature trains with real people and a set of a city behind them. Director Frederick Wilhelm Murnau of Nosferatu fame used many tricks in this film. Here we see a double exposure of two trains crossing over each other. Here is a triple exposure of a beach, a boat, and the city. This woman wants a married man to come to the city with him. Notice how dark it is. And here is another double exposure. Here we can see the German Expressionism for which Murnau was so famous. The dark, shady scenes, overdone shadows, awkward angles. Here is more double exposure. Uh, they would cover one part of the lens, shoot the film, and then cover the other part of the lens and shoot on the same reel of film to get this effect. Here we see the woman from the city. Here is a long tracking shot for which Murnau was famous. We see the man carrying a bunch of bulrushes in near darkness. Pay attention to the foreground, middle ground, and background of this long tracking shot. They are very distinct from each other. Here we see another beautiful tracking shot. This was done with a crane, while the man barely saves his wife's life. She is very angry at him at this point because he almost tried to kill her. They are swallowed up and spat out by the city. After much consternation, they see a church, and she falls back in love with him again. There is a wedding going on inside. Notice the exaggerated lighting shining on the pastor and the couple getting married, while everything else is in deep shadow. We see the couple enter in silhouette and slowly take their seats. Here is more example of expressionism, starting with a bright spinning wheel. What is it, we wonder? We back away from it to reveal that it is the front of a large carnival building. Here we have another tracking shot going into the entrance of the building. We have Bellhops, it seems? Ticket takers, perhaps? A long, continuous shot in through the tunnel and to the exaggerated German Expressionist set of the fairground rides. The set was terribly expensive and cost most of the movie's budget. Here we see another triple exposure with cupids flying around. 
This represents the daydreamy nature of the couple before the waiter brings them back to reality. Here's another trick shot done with fake cars and bicycles in the foreground and a rear projection screen in the background as the couple walks on a sound stage. They embrace and are brought back to reality by everyone almost killing them. On their way home, they get in a violent storm, which is mostly shot in almost complete blackness except for the flashes of lightning. The wife goes overboard and is thought drowned, but she is found at the end and all is well. Here at the end, we finally get the sunrise of the title. It is a new day, and who knows what may happen. Here we see the woman with her hair down for the first time. She is played by Juliet Gaynor, who received an Oscar for her performance in Sunrise. All is well, and it's a happy ending. The man and his wife are back together and in as much in love as ever. Again, the image of the sunrise with rays beaming out beautifully, fading into a finesse. Again, very expressionistic. Two weeks later, the jazz singer was released, and everybody forgot about Sunrise. You ain't heard nothing. You want to hear Toot 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 All right. Hold on. Hold on. Lou, listen. Play Toot 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 Three chorus, you understand? And the third chorus, I whistle. Now give it to him hard and heavy. Go right ahead. 